Hi, my name is Sarah Pernaud and I'm going to present a joint work with Gaëtan Laurent and André Schrottenloer entitled Clustering Effect in Simon and Simek. So, let's start by a little bit of context. Simon and Speck are two lightweight block ciphers introduced, introduced by the NSA in 2013. Simon is optimized in hardware while Speck is optimized in software. The NSA tried to get Simon and Speck standardized at ISO, but some experts from other countries were suspicious. They were suspicious because Simon and Speck were, were introduced without any rationale and because of the NSA's previous involvement in the creation and promotion of backdoor cryptographic algorithm as a dual EC. And uh, they were also suspicious because there were no clear need for standardization of new cipher. So for those reasons, many papers study Simon and Speck. A little bit later, an academic variant of Simon and Speck was introduced. This variant uh, is Simec. So in the following, we'll focus on Simon and Simec. So uh, here is a brief overview of our results. And for example, for Simec with a block size of 64 bits and a key size of 128 bits, we obtain an attack over 42 rounds out of 44, while previously the bet best attack only reached 37 rounds. So uh, first, I will describe Simon and Simec and differential and linear cryptanalysis. Then I will uh, present our stronger distinguisher for differential and linear cryptanalysis. And then I will present our improved key recovery attacks against Simec and Simec. So uh, let's start by describing Simon and Simec. Simon and Simec are both Festel cipher. So uh, a Festel cipher works as follows. First, we start with a plain text of n bits and we split into two blocks of n over two bits, uh, a left block and the right block. And the left block goes into a round function, which depends on the uh, round key, k0. And the output of this round function is XOR to the right part. And the right part becomes the left part, and the left part becomes the right part. This is done r times, with r the number of rounds. And at the end, we obtain the ciphertext by concatenating the left part and the right part. So Festel network is characterized by a block size n, a key size kappa, a number of rounds r, and a round function f. The famous example of Festel cipher is the data encryption standard. Here, the, the round function will not depend on the round key. So the round key will just be XOR to the right part. So uh, now let's speak about Simon, Spec, and Simec. So Simon is a Festel network with a quadratic round function. This round function is made of a left rotation of 8 bits and a left rotation of 1 bit. Then uh, the, those two things are on bitwise, and the result is XOR to uh, X rotated uh, by 2 bits to the left. And Simon has a linear key schedule. Concerning SPEC, SPEC is an add, rotate, and XOR cipher with this round function. Here I will not describe this round function because it's not the topic of this talk. And SPEC has the particularity that it reuses its round function in the key schedule. Concerning SIMEC, SIMEC is a Festel network with a quadratic round function. This round function is very similar to the round function of Simon. But for Simon, the rotation amounts are 8, 1, and 2. And for Simec, the rotation amounts are 5, 0, and 1. And Simec uh, reuses its round function in the key schedule as spec done. So in a more graphical way, Simon works as follows. So we have a rotation of 8 bit to the left, a rotation of 1 bit to the left, and both are on bitwise, and the result is XOR to the right part. This is a non-linear part, and there is also a linear part, which is composed of a left rotation of two bits. Uh, there are uh, 10 sets of parameters for Simon with different block size, key size, and number of rounds. And the key schedule of Simon is linear. Concerning Simec, the rotation amounts are 5, 0, and 1, and there is only three sets of parameters, and the key size is always equal, equal to the block size for Simec. And Simec has a nonlinear key schedule which reuses the round function f. So uh, this is all for Simon and Simec. And now let's speak about differential cryptanalysis. So here we represent the possible input difference uh, here and the possible output differences here. So uh, we define a differential as a pair delta delta prime such that the probability that an input difference delta output a difference delta prime is bigger than 2 to the minus n with n the block size. In order to find a such differential, we'll study the uh, propagation of differences through every round. Uh, and then, uh, we first, we need to define uh, the probability transition through one round. So uh, the probability transition through one round is just the probability that an input difference delta output a difference delta prime through one round. This can be extending to 
are round using trails. So the probability uh, of a trail is just the product of the probability of each round transition. So a trail is uh, determined by uh, the differences at each round. So here, the trail defined by uh, delta 0, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, and delta 4 uh, happens with probability p1 times p2 times p3 times p4. So uh, this is for round trail over R round. But if we want to compute uh, the probability that a difference delta 0 output a difference delta 4, we need to take into account all those trails. And uh, as we can see here, there are many, many trails. So in practice, uh, it is invisible to compute this sum. But uh, for several ciphers, uh, this can be approximated using only one trail. But for Simon and Simek, uh, this can't be done because uh, there is no dominant trail. So uh, in the following, we will uh, search for uh, a way of uh, computing a lower bound of uh, this probability. So here is for our differential. And uh, we also define a difference, uh, we also obtain a differential distinguisher. So if we collect d pairs of plain text with input difference delta, and if we compute uh, a statistic q, which is equal to the number of pairs that have an output difference of delta prime, then we are able to distinguish our cipher from a random permutation if the probability of our differential is bigger than 2 to the minus n. Because for the cipher, q is expected to be approximately d times the probability uh, of our differential, while for a random permutation, q is expected to be uh, approximately d times 2 to the minus n. So this is for differential cryptanalysis. Uh, and we can summarize uh, the case for differential cryptanalysis like this. So for differential cryptanalysis, we study differential, which, are, uh, which is a pair delta delta prime such that the probability that an input difference output a difference delta prime. Uh, and this probability needs to be bigger than 2 to the minus n. So uh, to find some uh, differential, we will define the probability transition through run round. And uh, in order to find a differential, the probability of this differential is just the sum over all uh, those trails uh, and uh, the sum of uh, all the probability of those trails. So uh, this is for differential cryptanalysis. And for linear cryptanalysis, we have uh, approximately the same thing. So uh, concerning linear cryptanalysis, we will focus on linear approximation, which is a pair alpha alpha prime, such that the probability that x mass by alpha equal the, run run, uh, the encryption of x mass by alpha prime minus 1 alpha, and the absolute value of this need to be bigger than 2 to the minus n over 2. Uh, and in order to find some linear approximation, we will define uh, the correlation of alpha alpha prime for run round as uh, two times the probability that x mass by alpha equal the run round encryption of x mass by alpha prime minus one. Uh, and for r, r round, we will define the ELP, which is the expected linear potential of alpha zero alpha r as uh, the sum over all uh, the trails of the product of the square correlation. So this formula is really similar to the formula of the differential case. So in the following, we will apply uh, our approach to differential and linear cryptanalysis. So uh, we also obtain a linear distinguisher. So uh, for this, this distinguisher, we need to collect d pairs of plain text ciphertext and to compute uh, our statistic q, which is equal to the number of pairs such that uh, p mass by alpha equals c mass by alpha prime minus the number of pairs that do not satisfy this relation. And uh, for the cipher, q squared is expected to be approximately d times the ELP of alpha alpha prime, while for a random permutation, q squared is expected to be approximately d times 2 to the minus n. So uh, in the next two parts, uh, we will focus on uh, how to find some stronger distinguisher for Simon and Simon. So uh, let's start by the differential case. So first, we'll need to uh, compute the probability transition through run round, so through f. So let's start by a small example. Here, we represent one round of Simec. And uh, if we consider a difference alpha equal 1 on the left part, uh, then we'll study uh, the propagation of this difference through run round. So first, there is the linear uh, propagation. So, uh, this, uh, so the, this difference propagates uh, through the run, round, uh, the run bit uh, rotation to the left. Uh, and then there is the nonlinear uh, diffusion. So uh, in order to study the difference uh, diffusion uh, through the AND operator, 
we need to uh, look at the value of uh, the same bit in the other state. So here for uh, this uh, bit, we need to study uh, the value of the gray bit. And if the value is 0, then the difference will not propagate, because 0 on 1 equals 0, on 0 on 0 is e equal also uh, to uh, 0. But uh, if the value is 1, then uh, the difference uh, propagates, because 1 on 0 equals 0, and 1 on 1 equals 1. So uh, here we, have, uh, we will have sometimes a difference on this bit, and some other time no difference. Uh, the same thing happened for the second bit. So in total, we have four possible outputs, and uh, all, uh, each of these outputs happen with probability 0.25. Uh, and this result can be generalized uh, like this. Uh, this was done by Kobel, Leander, and Thiessen at Crypto 2015. And uh, they say that uh, since f is quadratic, the exact probability transition through one round can be computed efficiently for Simon and Simon. So uh, they obtain uh, this formula, and uh, now uh, we are able to compute uh, the probability transition through one round. But uh, computing the probability transition through R round remains hard. And uh, here is our starting point. So uh, we observe this thing. So if we start with differences in a window of size W, then in the worst case, the difference uh, will stand in a window of size W plus 5, because the biggest amount of rotation is 5. But sometimes uh, the difference uh, will not propagate through the AND operator. And uh, because the rotation uh, amount 5 is associated to the uh, nonlinear part, then sometimes the difference uh, will not propagate. So uh, in the best case, if we start with differences in a window of size w equal, equal 3, then uh, we will obtain some differences in a window of size w plus 1 uh, at the output. So uh, this can be summarized uh, like this. Uh, Simec has a relatively slow diffusion. So in the following, we'll exploit uh, this property. So our idea is to focus on trails that are only active in a window of W bits. So it means that uh, in place of taking into account all, all of those trails, we'll just focus on a window, uh, on all the trails that are uh, in a window. So uh, here, uh, more formally, we choose a W uh, size of the window, and we define delta w as uh, the vector space of the differences active only in the w least significant bits. And uh, due to the Festel structure, we also define delta w square, which is the product delta w times delta w. And then uh, we are able to compute a lower bound of the probability of the differential delta 0, delta r, uh, by summing over all the characteristics with intermediate differences in delta w squared. So uh, here, we just uh, compute the sum of all uh, the probability of the trails uh, that are in a window of size delta w, uh, of size w. So uh, in, a more, uh, in practice, uh, we are able to compute uh, the lower bound for a window of size 18. Uh, but for a size 18, uh, it takes uh, approximately a week on a 48-core machine uh, using one terabyte of RAM. Uh, so this is a big computation. Uh, so here are our, our results. So first, we find some uh, tire lower bound for existing differential. So uh, this was done with W equal 18. And for example, uh, for the first differential, uh, the previous probability was 2 to the minus 60.02. But here, we find that a lower bound of the differential is 2 to the minus uh, 54.60. Uh, we also find a set of 64 uh, best characteristics, but uh, in the following, we'll uh, use the differential 0, 1 to 1, 0, because this differential is almost as good, and it will lead to a more efficient key recovery because it has fewer active bits. Uh, here is a comparison of uh, the differential 0, 1 to 1, 0 on the differential 1, 2 to 2, 1, which is one of uh, the best characteristics we have identified. And for example, for 30 rounds, uh, the differential 0, 1 to 1, 0 uh, have probability 2 to the minus 60.41, while the best characteristic we have identified have a probability 2 to the minus 59.92. So those two probabilities are really close. So in the following, we will use the first one because it has fewer active bits. So uh, the key recovery part will be more efficient. Uh, moreover, we also study uh, the effect of the size of the window W. 
And uh, what we observe is that after W equal 15, the increase is quite slow. So uh, we expect our lower bound of the, of the probability of the differential to be close to the exact probability of the differential. So uh, this is all for differential cryptanalysis. Now let's move on linear cryptanalysis. So uh, we apply exactly the same approach to linear cryptanalysis, and we find a set of 64 almost optimal trails. And uh, those trails are just bit reverse version of the optimal differential characteristics. But uh, as for the differential case, uh, we will uh, use the trail 1, 0 to 0, 1 because it has fewer active bits, so it will lead to a more efficient uh, key recovery. Uh, so here we compare uh, our results on differential and linear cryptanalysis, and what we observe is that the results are really close. So for example, for 30 rounds, we have uh, a probability of 2 to the minus 60.41 for the differential case, and a probability of 2 to the minus 60.36 for the linear case. So those two values, values are really, really similar. Uh, moreover, here we represent in gray the log 2 of the number of trails that are taking into account in our analysis. And what we observe is that uh, we take into account a huge number of trails. So uh, for example, for 30 rounds, we take into account 2 to the 254 trails. So uh, this is why our lower bounds are uh, higher than the previous lower bounds. This is due to the fact that we take into account a uh, uh, high number of trails. Uh, so here, uh, uh, those uh, are uh, results on Simon. And uh, we study the effect of the size of the window for Simon in linear cryptanalysis. And uh, what we observed is that the increase is quite important, even for the large values of W. So uh, this is probably due to the fact that the rotation amounts for Simon are, higher, are bigger than the rotation amounts for Simec, because for Simon we have a rotation of 8 bits, while for Simec the, uh, the bigger rotation is 5. So uh, here we expect our lower bound of the probability of the linear hulls for Simon to be not as tight as the one for Simec. So probably further work can improve our results for Simon. Simon. So uh, this is all for linear cryptanalysis. Uh, now let's move on to uh, key recovery attack. So uh, here we start with our distinguishers, so a linear or differential distinguisher. And then uh, in order to do a key recovery attack, we will add some rounds before and or after our distinguisher. And then uh, we'll need to guess a subset of the key, which is here denoted key P, KT, KB, and KC. And then, uh, using this subset of the key, we will be able to compute our statistic uh, Q, so the statistic of our distinguisher. Uh, we denote KPLG uh, the total number of guest bits. And this number needs to be uh, smaller than the number of uh, than the key size, kpa. So uh, a naive way to do a key recovery attack uh, is as follows. So first, we need to go over all the possible key guess. And then, for each key guess, uh, we will need to compute our statistic Q of k. And if this statistic is bigger than the threshold s, then k is a possible candidate. This requires d times 2 to the kpg operation, uh, uh, with d the data and kpg the size uh, of k. But this can be improved to d plus 2 to the kpg using algorithm tricks. So for differential cryptanalysis, we will use the dynamic key guessing. And for linear cryptanalysis, we will use the false wash transform approach. Uh, I will not describe those two attacks in details, but uh, just to give an overview. Uh, so this, those attacks are uh, made of three steps. So first, we need to find efficient distinguishers. So uh, this was done in the previous parts. Then we will need to find the subset of the key that need to be guessed uh, to evaluate our statistic Q. And then we'll need to rearrange operation to reduce the time complexity from d times 2 to the kpg to d plus 2 to the kpg. So uh, we have previously seen that uh, the step 0 is quite similar for differential and linear cryptanalysis. And uh, the step 2 is also really similar for differential and linear cryptanalysis. But concerning the step 1, this step is really uh, different from differential and linear cryptanalysis because we'll need to guess a bigger, uh, a higher number of uh, bits for differential cryptanalysis than for linear cryptanalysis. So here we compare the number of bits that need to be guessed for differential and linear attacks uh, against SIMEX 64128. 
So uh, for each case, so differential and linear cryptanalysis, we have uh, two columns. So uh, the first column uh, means uh, the total number of bits, and the second column means the uh, number of independent bits. Because when we we'll, uh, guess a large number of key bits, uh, those key bits, uh, some of those key bits will be linked using uh, key schedule relations. So uh, sometimes uh, the number of independent key bits will be smaller than the total number of bits. And uh, what we observed is that if we want to add seven rounds uh, before and or after our distinguisher, we will need to guess 114 bits in differential cryptanalysis, but uh, in linear cryptanalysis, only 68 bits uh, will need to be guessed. So uh, our attacks in linear cryptanalysis will be better than in lin differential cryptanalysis because uh, those numbers are smaller than the number for differential cryptanalysis. So uh, here are our, are our results. So uh, I just uh, we just put the linear result because the linear uh, cryptanalysis is uh, better than differential cryptanalysis here. And uh, for SIMEC 64128, we obtain an attack uh, that reached 42 rounds out of 44, while previously the best attack only reached 37 rounds. Concerning Simon, for example, uh, for Simec, uh, Simon 96, 124, and 44, we find an attack on 45 rounds out of 54, while previously only 38 rounds were reached. So uh, to conclude, uh, in this work, we find some better uh, probability for existing differential and linear distinguishers using trails with all intermediate state in a window of W bits. Uh, we also find some new distinguishers with the minimum number of active bits. So uh, then the key recovery are cheaper. And uh, using that, we obtain some attack uh, against Simec and Simon. And in particular, we obtain an attack on 42 rounds out of 44 for Simec 64198 and 43 rounds out of 52 for Simon 9696. And those attacks uh, used uh, some uh, advanced tricks uh, as the first wash transform approach. Uh, however, concerning Simon, uh, our lower bound of the linear approximations seems to be not as tight as uh, the lower bound for Simec. This is probably due to the fact that the amount rotation for Simon are bigger than the amount rotation for Simec. So probably further work can uh, improve our results. So thanks for listening, and if you, go, uh, if you want more details, you can uh, read our paper.